remember masterclass infertility three forever so for the faculty especially we've got a photo frame i request all the faculty members to please collect the photo frame from the registration counter and as i can see the moment i start talking people have started to come in we would not take too much of time and get started in exactly 30 seconds from now i kindly request all of you to please be seated keep your mobile phones on silent and keep your gossips for later as well in case if you would like to ask any questions please keep that reserved as well do not forget this is all going to be one experience that you're never going to forget i'm sure all of you are waiting for the star of the moment our chief guest uh, professor sir arul kumaran i request sir to please join us on the stage he is a past president royal college uk past president figo past president British Medical Association words and adjectives fall short when we introduce Professor Sir Anil Kumarun, a man with not only a golden heart but a brilliant mind as well. We present you Professor Sir Anil Kumarun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind. Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind it's introduction. Post lunch. So if anyone of you post lunch. So if anyone of you feel like sleeping or snoring, I won't take it on you. Liberty to do so. Yeah, I had full liberty to do so. My first slide is actually. My first slide is actually about the importance of improving our fetal surveillance. So I'm not going to focus only on electronic fetal monitoring. Electronic fetal monitoring. I'll be touching a little bit about intermittent auscultation as well. The topic has become important in the. The topic UK has become important the in the UK Royal College because the started a project Royal called College each started a project called Each Baby Counts and they counts, had a clinical engagement, forum, had a clinical in engagement forum in July 2017. Yeah. It is a national the improvement it program, is a national and, the improvement idea program and the idea was to reduce the number of babies, who die, the number of babies who die or left severely disabled as a result of preventable incident occurring in, term, occurring in term, term labor. After 37 weeks. Term labor is after 37 and, uh, weeks. We think and uh, uh, we, we might think, be able to reduce the number uh, of stillbirths. We might be able to reduce the number of stillbirths and severely damaged baby, baby by 2020. So the program started in 2014, and the idea was to investigate, all the, was to investigate all the deaths which happened. And there were 2,500 and there were 2,500 expert uh, sessions, looking at 1,136 uh, babies in the UK in 2015. Of these babies, you will be surprised that 126 babies. Babies so were still born. The mother came with so the they the mother baby came with a live baby, baby in utero, baby in utero but couldn't take uh, the baby home. 156 uh, died within 156 seven days of died birth. Within seven so days most of birth. likely, so the, most injury likely the injury or asphyxial or trauma in during must have happened but it's during what is labor. More astonishing is but it's what is more astonishing 854 is actually babies 854 babies were severely so damaged. That's a massive number in one so year. that's a massive number in one year, 854 babies. Because when you count perinatal mortality, the it is tip of the iceberg. Higher. The morbidity is much higher. And as you could see here, and as you uh, could see reviewers here, reviewers concluded uh, that reviewers concluded that outcome of seventy six percent of these babies, of these babies may have been if they different. received different care. If so they received different the care, so seventy five percent of the babies they could have uh, avoided, avoided death, uh, avoided permanent and, uh, injury. They said that and uh, they said babies, that seven twenty seven uh, babies showed uh, findings. Uh, conclusions as to uh, how conclusions best they can manage, this condition, best they can manage, manage this, this condition or manage this problem. Number of common factors were number of common factors were at play in many cases. And problems with accurate assessment of problems with accurate assessment of fetal well-being in labour was the main problem. And issues with staff and understanding complex and processing so complex CTG situations. So it's intermittent CTG or intermittent auscultation is one part of the equation. But the other part of the equation is whether the mother had hypertension, diabetes, meconium, IUGR, and so on. Whether putting all that complex and, uh, equation to identify and uh, share lessons, to identify and across, and lessons the by across the UK by making this inquiry. These are the recommendations made. These are the recommendations uh, made. Field monitoring, formally assessing all low risk women at admission. That means we must know what type of baby we are looking after, whether it's low risk or following high risk. The nice and following the NICE guidelines in terms of, of fetal surveillance was important. 
and that ensuring all staff working in the that labor all staff working in the labor ward have documented evidence of appropriate training because quite, a number, of training training because because quite a number of them don't have training. As they are just qualify as a midwife or an obstetrician, but they don't have particular experience in people's It is also important to have good neonatal it is also or important to have good neonatal or pediatric teams because they are quite important and human factors because if there are lack of staff they don't um, understand the they don't understand the situation and have a junior staff for a complex case then it tends so key to go members wrong. Of staff so key members of staff maintaining appropriate clinical maintaining oversight, appropriate clinical oversight seeking a different perspective to support decision this, this means or a, senior a consultant or a senior midwife in being present situation in order to help the situation yeah sure yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I would also like sure. to invite the chairperson. Uh, I would Dr. also like J. to invite Fidvisa the chairperson, Sir Dr. J. Fidvi, sir, to please join us. I request Dr. Indu Agarwal and uh, Dr. Girish Mani, sir. Thank you. Please join us thank you. as a chair. Sorry thank you. We, we are thank you. The thank you. Sorry, we, we are doing the before this chairperson. introduction before this chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so if I go through okay, this, so uh, if I the go key through this, uh, the key management decision should not be based on CTG interpretation because it is only one part of the equation. And healthcare the equation. professional must and also, take into, professional must also take into account stage mother's and history, of labor, stage and progress of labor, antenatal risk factors, and make a composite decision making. And if the baby is determined, and to, have baby is determined to have hypothermia, head cooling or body cooling from the very beginning, that's why the they should determine that. Essential. That's why the pediatricians the are essential of birth. at the time of birth. And every effort, birth. And uh, every passive, effort cooling should start uh, passive cooling should start followed by active heat. Followed um, by active initially, heat. we put on the heat if you, you, want, to put put on on heat if you want to put the resuscitator the on. on but now if the baby is born in an extremely bad condition, we prefer to do the passive cooling. And the senior member of the staff must maintain oversight. So these are the recommendations. So these are the recommendations. Are but these recommendations new. are not something new. In 1997, there was a confidential inquiry, into, a still confidential inquiry into stillbirths so and deaths in infancy. Roughly so about 30 years ago. Roughly about 30 years ago. 20 years ago. Uh, 20 and years they ago, had also and they had also inquired of babies over 1,500 grams, and they thought 50% of and the babies' lives, 50 could, have of the baby's saved, lives could have been definitely saved, probably, and 25% probably, so altogether 75% they could have saved. And the saved. problems were inability to interpret the CTG, failure to incorporate the clinical picture, delay in taking action, and poor communication. So I'll try to cover these four areas which just found in 1997, as well as 2017. But interestingly, 10 years ago, Sir Liam Donaldson, who was Chief Medical also Officer, produced report also produced a report calling intrapartum related deaths only in England. 500 missed opportunities, the date of birth and date of death is the same. And these were again intrapartum related deaths and the problems were the same. Inability to delay the trace, action, failure delay in taking action, the failure to incorporate the clinical picture. And so every 10 years we are producing. So every 10 years we are producing this report, and we have not succeeded in reducing the number of stillbirths or deaths, and, and, still and, still and, and, and the same mistakes so are made. Really start from the very so I'm going to really start from the very basic as to how we can overcome the problem. Go on to the thing second about the pathophysiology. thing about the pathophysiology. Now, this, this talk is, now, this very, is, elementary, this talk is very elementary, but I thought of, but having, that I thought of permission having that with Lakshmi's because, permission uh, it's quite because uh, it's quite important for us to understand works. how the system works. So there are four features so on a CTG There are four trade. features on a uh, CTG baseline trade. Rate, baseline, uh, baseline, variability, baseline rate, baseline variability, acceleration, accelerations, and decelerations. No, why we they must are produced no, from a CTG trace? Why they are produced from a CTG trace? And what does it signify? And what action we should take based on these four features? So let us start from the very basic. So let us start from the very basic thing about the baseline rate or the heart rate. The baseline rate or the heart rate is determined by a small piece of 
myocardium, which is the sinoatrial the node. node. You can see the, right the SA atrium, node the pace in the right atrium, which and is the, the pacemaker. And the myocardium, myocardium is a specialized muscle with syncytial muscle. So the cell borders, don't, so cell borders don't completely compared block each other compared to a skeletal muscle or a smooth muscle. So the impulse generated by the sinoatrial node passes into the myometrium of the right atrium and the left atrium and through the bundle of his into the ventricle. So it's a nice arrangement. The pacemaker is firing. The atrium pumps into the ventricles and the left into the outer and the right into the pulmonary trunk.